It's a proud moment for 750 girls across India who were part of the Azadi SAD2 project. And with me, Srimadi Kesan, the founder of Space Kids India. Thank you very much. Congratulations. You must be on cloud nine now. Oh my God, if there is anything beyond that, I am there. <laughs> So excited, so very excited because this is, uh, uh, you know, it is basically I am representing the entire girls fraternity, I should say. Not only the 750 girls, but all the girls who are watching the television and who believed that, you know, this should be a successful mission for them to step out of right. their villages. Because uh, more than getting into classes, more than getting into STEM education, I would say first stepping out of their villages. Right, right. So this is a big journey. This, you know, I consider it to be a big journey uh, for them to step out and get into this beautiful world. So One surprise, one challenge from this experience? Uh, surprise, surprise, surprise is... Uh, first thing, uh, I never expected we will be able to do the Azadi Sat 2 because with uh, all the funding and right, uh, right. you know so many challenges came across, but uh, somehow grace of God we were able to you know uh, move forward. Uh, I mean that is the uh, surprise and the challenge I right, should say right, because right. both ways it is. And uh, I never expected 200 children to come here right. to Shar to witness the launch. And that's a huge surprise right, because right. Uh, this time it was very difficult, you know, they had examinations right. and everything. But beyond everything, to, you know, before we stepped out of Shar, we got our signals, we got the data and uh, we got the first beautiful message from space. Azadi Sat is live. So the first message that we got from Azadi Sat is uh, Namaste world. This is uh, from G20 presidency. Right. So we're extremely happy that, you know, we've paid a tribute to our nation. How important Sri is to nurture interest in space science, particularly among girl children across India? Uh, see, everybody knows uh, uh, medicine and engineering and people only talk about that. Beyond that, you know, to get into space, they always feel that space is very, very expensive. Even the edu space education is very, very expensive. That's what people feel. So we want to break that myth. And, you know, right from, uh, you know, uh, high school students, we want to get them, uh, create an awareness for them and make them feel comfortable about the subject first and then I think there'll be a lot of innovations coming up because space is the future. I keep repeating this, space is the future and we need a lot of girls because girls are very good in multitasking, I would definitely say and that's the reason we need more girls at least, you know, if not in the forefront, at least in the back end. What do boys do now? <laughs> Wait and watch! <laughs> Lastly, this kind of catch them young concept, uh, yeah. particularly among girls, what yeah. kind of an impact in the next five years, ten years, this could bring about? I'm very sure that uh, these 750 girls are going to be role models, inspiration to a lot, many girls sitting out and watching there and back in their schools and everything. You know, uh, parents seldom think that, you know, a girl is born to get married and go away. So we want to break that myth and again break that and say that give them the wings. They need to fly. There is one industry that is so beautiful and please allow them to work. You know what happens, Sam, is, you know, this industry, you know, requires a lot of working hard 24-7. In fact, we've not slept for almost like about 15 days, nonstop. <clears throat> so parents uh, feel nervous that, you know, girls may get dark, you know, complexion wise. That's the right. basic things they think. And not even psychological. They think about the physical appearances and everything. I, you know, parents sure it's high time that they understood that you know they are made for much bigger things. Right. So this is a loud message for all of them. And what's the shelf life for this satellite now? Uh, it's about a year. It's a one-year uh, mission. So we're very happy that you know we'll collect. Lastly, all the data. for people who don't know much of uh, space science, in simple terms, what will this satellite do once it's in the orbit? See, once it's in the orbit, communication from, uh, you know, when we have disasters and everything, it's very difficult to use mobile phones and all that. Through ham radio frequencies, what we can do is we can connect the interior pockets mm. and all that. So what happens is we can save a lot of lives and so many things can be possible. Reach out there and, you know, so these things this are possible. One first of its kind concept. That is the expandable satellite. Oh. The expandable satellite is the first of its kind, wherein, uh, you know, the 8U satellite in on Earth is going to be 64U in space. So what happens is you get a lot of volume inside. And this volume, what happens is we can break this and, uh, you know, children who are really excited right. about doing some experiments, at economical cost, we can give them. So right. that's the whole motive. Disrupt space. Right, right.
Thank you so much for your time. Actually, Harry Kota, that's Reish, Sam Daniel, Find the TV.